Now, millions of people who live in flats and apartments in England and Wales have to pay service charges to management companies for repairs to communal areas. But now the industry's own governing body is calling for greater regulation of these companies, saying some are taking huge service charges and not doing enough in return. We've got loads of kids in the block of flats. When Rod Campbell bought his flat seven years ago, he says the block was in good condition. But despite tens of thousands of pounds in management fees being paid by the 48 flat owners every year to a string of managing agents, he says little or no work appears to have been carried out. We um, invested tremendous amounts of money as flat owners um, for a number of years now. The most recent managing agent unfortunately doubled our charges. We were asked to pay round about between all of us, 40,000 plus or minus to have the building painted and renovated. Again, nothing's been done. They are telling us that we're getting cleaning on a regular basis. Half of the block, the lights don't work. It is a hazard, it really is a hazard. Because there is no formal regulation, it's difficult to say just how many management agents there are. But in England and Wales, it's estimated there are around 800. And between them, they collect around 1.6 billion pounds a year in service charges. While many leaseholders have no problem with their managing agents, without any regulation, people living in the one and three quarter million private flats that have to pay service charges have less protection from unscrupulous operators. The Leasehold Advisory Service, which helps resolve leasehold disputes, says service charge complaints are the biggest issue it has to deal with. Problems include money not being spent where it's supposed to. Um, all the problems are people not being consulted at all, being pre presented with bills for large sums of money, that's a problem. Other cases are fe people feel that the funds that they have set aside for many years are not being used for the purpose for which they were originally collected. In fact, they're being used perhaps for other premises altogether. The government's already looking into reforming parts of the rental industry. Now the body which represents around a fifth of managing agents says it's time for the government to clamp down on rogue agents that are bringing their industry into disrepute. Well, anybody can set themselves up as a managing agent and find themselves in a position where they're managing people's most valuable and treasured asset, their home. What we're asking the government to do is if they are now going to consider regulation for letting agents, then we would like to be part of that regulation so that the whole of the residential sector is regulated in a reasonable way to ensure that anybody who is managing property is competent, qualified, insured and audited. Those pleas from managing agents themselves are now being considered by the government. For Rod and millions like him that have to pay service charges, more accountability and control of how their money is spent on their homes can't come soon enough. Keith Doyle, BBC News. OK, well, he, David Hewitt is the Chief Executive of the Association of Residential Managing Agents you saw in our piece. Um, so let's just talk about how bad the problem is. We saw somebody there who's paying thousands of pounds, the repairs aren't being done. That happens often, does it? Uh, it can happen. I wouldn't say often, mm. but there are enough issues and enough occasions where this sort of thing does go on that it justifies calling for regulation. Mm. And what, I mean, if someone, if you find yourself in one of those situations, I, I assume you feel very powerless as an individual. You're thinking that it's too big to take on. Maybe there's a lot of you in the block and it's very hard to coordinate an action of any kind. Where do you start that process? If you think something is going wrong, work's not being done, you're paying too much money, where, where do you start? Well, the problem we've got at the moment, we've got a lot of legislation that provides protection for lessees, but it's only uh, legislation that you can use if something has gone wrong already. What we're saying is we ought to have more protection at the front end so that things don't go wrong later on. In terms of the lessees' opportunities, they can go, as your speaker, uh, guest earlier on said, they can go to a lease valuation tribunal for adjudication. Uh, they can go to a lease valuation tribunal for an appointment of a manager. And if enough of them can get together, mm. they can even go for no fault right to manage. And those tribunals are binding. I mean, is the, the landlord can't afterwards just say, well, I'm not going to do oh, that. Oh, no, no, they're binding. Binding. Okay. So if the tribunal says the landlord's overcharged, the landlord must refund that money. Okay. Um, interesting as well, you're saying more up front. So, for example, do you think there should be f set fees, agreed set fees, set as a basis then? That's not going to do you much good, is it? Uh, well, no, you can't, you can't have set fees. You've got every block is different. 
in age, requirements, the service standard levels, if you've got a lift, if you've got estate staff, the management issues are different with every property. Okay, so, so you decide though the prices at the moment? No, the market decides. Right. Um, the majority of blocks now are actually lessee controlled, so the lessees mm. actually make the decisions as to who they appoint, and believe me, they are very conscious about management fees. Mm. Uh, one thing that occurs to me is, if you're going into a new block, how can you judge on the face of it when you first get there? whether the charges they're proposing are fair or not. I mean, they may seem high, but if they're very good landlords and do all the work, then they may not actually be that high. How, how can you judge that? You can't. I mean, one, one way a lot of lessees do it is they compare their service charges with somebody who lives in a, or a friend who lives in a similar block mm. down the road, and they compare the charges there. But in the end, a good managing agent will explain why the charges are what they are mm. and should be able to give full justification and assurance to the lessees that the charges are reasonable. Okay, David Hewitt, thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you.